Good morning. Please stand and pray the diocesan prayer for vocations. O oh God, hear, hear our prayer, prayer and, and let our cry come, come unto you. you. Bless, Bless our diocese, diocese of Savannah, Savannah with, with many, many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and, and religious life. Give, give the men and women you call the light to understand your gift and the love to follow always in the footsteps of your priestly son. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We welcome you this morning to Blessed Sacrament Church. Today we will, in a special way, remember Trudy and Corky Fleming, their 53rd wedding anniversary today, so we want to pray special graces on them. And also, yesterday, Gary and Catherine Cooper celebrated their 52nd wedding anniversary so for both of these couples and their families, we ask God's blessing today in this Holy Mass. Let us bow our heads now as we examine our, our sins and ask the Lord's forgiveness and peace. Lord Jesus, you are the bread that came down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal food that brings life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lift up those who are burdened. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Namath, Give me your vineyard to be my vegetable garden, since it is close by next to my house. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will give you its value in money. Naboth answered him, the Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral heritage. Ahab went home disturbed and angry at the answer Naboth and the Jezreelite had made to him. I will not give you my ancestral heritage. Lying down in his bed, he turned away from food and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said to him, Why are you so angry that you will not eat? He answered her, because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you a vineyard in exchange. But he refused to let me have his vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, a fine ruler over Israel you are indeed. Get up, eat and be cheerful. I will obtain the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite for you. 
So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and having sealed them with his seal, sent them to the elders and to the nobles who lived in the same city with Naboth. That is what she, this is what she wrote in the letters. Proclaim a fast and set Naboth at the head of the people. Next, get two scoundrels to face him and accuse him of having cursed God and king. Then take him out and stone him to death. His fellow citizens, the elders and nobles who dwelt in his city, did as Jezebel had ordered them in writing through the letters she had sent them. They proclaimed a fast and placed Naboth at the head of the people. Two scoundrels came in and confronted him with the accusation, Naboth has cursed God and king. And they led him out of the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent the information to Jezebel that Naboth had been stoned to death. When Jezebel learned that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Go on, take a procession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite that he refused to sell you, because Naboth is not alive but dead. On hearing that Naboth was dead, Ahab started on his way down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. The Responsorial Psalm. Hearken to my words, O Lord. The Lord, excuse me, Lord, listen to my groaning. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to my, my groaning. groaning. Hearken to my words, O Lord. Attend to my sighing. Heed my call for help, my King and my God. Lord, listen to my groaning. At dawn I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. Lord, Lord listen, listen to my, to my groaning. groaning. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. Lord, Lord, listen, listen to, my, to groaning. my groaning. Amen. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand them your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the time of Jesus, 
in the Holy Land, the people were what was called an occupied people, which means the Romans had conquered that land. And they, of course, taxed the people and put them under all kinds of of restrictions. And the Jewish people hated it. And one of the restrictions that they had, or one of the Roman laws, was that any Roman soldier could walk up to any person at any time and take out his sword and he would touch you on the shoulder with the flat part of his sword. And if he did that, that Jewish person had to take anything and carry it for one mile, whatever it was. And the people absolutely hated it. They were just eking out a living as it was, barely able to make enough money to eat. And then here comes some soldier and he makes you carry a sack of rocks a mile and put it down and then you're released. Jesus refers to that and that hatred of being under not having freedom just to go and do your work. He says that if someone presses you to carry a burden for one mile, you carry it for two if someone strikes you on one side, then turn the other cheek so they can strike you on the other. And Jesus is not recommending weakness in the face of oppression or evil or injustice, but He's recommending a different approach to evil, the one that really defeats evil. It's not violence and attacking back with evil. That never works. But what does work is... um, Uh, speaking up for the truth that the Lord says. Now, one word in the Bible that stands for evil without question is the word Jezebel, doesn't it? Everybody knows that name because she was her acts of evil were just so uh, gross and and, and right in your face. And today that story of um, the king who wanted a a vineyard, you know, people always want something they don't have, right? And so she, he said, let me buy it from you. And he says, this is my ancestral heritage. And of course, Jezebel says, here you are, the king of Israel. In other words, you have power, use it. Who cares what happens to these peons? And so she simply calls in scoundrels and said, Jeze- uh, uh, cursed God and king, they took him out, stoned him to death, an innocent man. And then he went and took. And Jezebel never even blinked. The fact that this caused great pain to another person and death to another person and to their family never even occurred that I should be thinking about others and that I am in great danger of using power that I'll be held accountable to, especially the power to do evil. We've all been given power over others and God calls us to love God with all our heart and neighbors ourselves. We have to care and look around us at what's happening to people around us, to care, and then to do whatever the Lord calls us to do to right those injustices. So we pray for that grace today. God has given us power. We need to use it because we will be held accountable to how we used it. I invite you to stand together now. As people of faith, we lift up our hearts in prayer, confident that our Father loves us and will hear our needs. For our church, may the Lord increase her in faith, hope, and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For individuals in positions of authority, May the Holy Spirit guide them in how they use their power and inspire them in protecting the lives of those most vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who struggle with addiction, may Christ the physician be with them in their struggles and bring them hope and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us gathered here, may the grace of the word and the sacrament deepen our faith and our trust in God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, and especially Father Dominic, 
Mamarella. May they be marked with the sign of faith. May they come to share in the baptismal promise of new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for all of those exper- uh, mar- uh, their marriage anniversaries, Trudy and Corky Fleming, their 53rd anniversary, Gary Catherine Cooper, their 52nd anniversary, and all those who are celebrating anniversaries in this spring season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you and we trust in you. And we ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, for he is Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His. God, in the offerings presented here, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacraments. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, In mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, the blessed seraphim, worship and exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Sana, sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dufon, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep, the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power. Now, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health and mind and body and soul. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. For those at home, we pray together our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament, body, blood, soul, and divinity. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I choose to be one with you, Jesus. I want your heart next to my heart, your soul next to my soul, your infinite divinity to fill me completely. Jesus, I want to be one with you in my thoughts, feelings, and desires, all that I do and that I do not do. Jesus, I love you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls.